Hello everybody. It has been quite a while actually, longer than I actually uh, thought it would be. So to give a quick, very very brief before I get into the video for, for those who just stumbled on this, I am extremely busy with a lot of life stuff um, in school and whatnot, so I have been extremely hard pressed to get video content out. But luckily I am pretty well done, so now I can actually get back to making videos. And thank you all so much for being patient, especially those who are my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate that. But let's get to today's topic. So before we get back into Critter Miss and other things like that, I wanted to talk about something that I've noticed recently in Vampire the Masquerade of... Uh, been involved in some LARPs as well as like a couple of other games and a lot of them had uh, new players. And when it comes to new players in Vampire, I think that there, I started to pick up a very fundamental rule that I think that everybody should adopt and since I have a video show about this stuff, you know, I kind of have the ability to talk about it. And that is that whenever you have a new player to Vampire the Masquerade, and you're making the first character or the second character and whatnot, in that process, clan should always come first when making your first character. And especially over concept of character itself. Now, so basically this whole idea is that clan over concept. And the reason being is that this is not the norm in making role-playing game characters, especially nowadays whenever, like, it's very streamlined on how you, you make a character, um, in that you come up with, like, a general concept of what you want to do, and then you make the stats work for you. So the general idea, especially for, like, Dungeons & Dragons, I've noticed that this is, is pretty well the norm, is that you have this idea of, like, okay, I want to be this fighter who used to be a paladin but then lost his way, something like that, or like, I really want to be a very strong, like, religious type, I want to be very spiritual and be the spiritual leader of the group, or I had this idea of a runaway who just escaped their abusive family, um, like a, a wealthy aristocrat that's trying to live the simple life after escaping the confines of aristocratic life and, like, arranged marriages and so forth. Like, like, stuff like that. And then you start building a character around it. Like, like I said, let's, let's take the aristocrat one. So, all right, I was a wealthy aristocrat, and I ran away from home because they were going to get me an arranged marriage, and it just was awful. Like, all of it was awful. I hated it. So now I live the life I want to live. Okay, so you go to D&D &D and you're like, okay, this is the character I want, so let's think about what could work here. And just about anything can work. D&D is very first player friendly, but let's say you go with a rogue. So you make your rogue, and then you can be like, okay, race, what can really add to it? All right, well, maybe elf would be a better one. Um, that would more have, like, the stringent aristocrat family or something like that. So you go with elf, and elf, and like I said, you could really fit this story into most of the races and classes for D&D. &D. And, and, and then you, you make your character. So you, you've gotten your character from your concept. Vampire the Masquerade is a completely different beast and remains a different beast even to this day. It has gotten a little bit better about this in that like the mythos is so involved and it requires so much knowledge to really kind of grasp the game that you can't just kind of dive into Vampire. You can't... The mythos and the meta are set in a way that it's challenging to make characters against the norm. Like, you have to understand the general mythos of Vampire. You have to read the books. Like, you can't just dive in. You have to at least have a fundamental understanding before you jump into the game. But let's say that you're, you're, you're not that far. You've got a whole bunch of new players. They don't have time to read the whole book. Well, the concept over clan thing for Vampire is not a good way to go about doing it. The traditional kind of way of like, all right, I want to make this aristocrat that ran away from home doesn't exactly work for D... Excuse me, doesn't exactly work for Vampire. 
because Vampire is so stringent on mythology that certain clans would not embrace certain characters, and the certain character that you want is not going to fit the bill. So, for instance, let's say that you want to make a street urchin that kind of is rebellious and individualistic and like, rah, rah, freedom, rah, rah. Lissandra's immediately off the table. Lissandra, well, okay, you could do this, but if you're just generally making it like that, a Lissandra is an extremely poor way to go about doing it. You'd want more of like a Bruja. Bruja would make a lot more sense. Lissandra have a very, very, very strict way of embracing, and they rarely, if ever, fail. And that is, is that they go to a person who they have their eye on. Somebody typically of, of, of a wealthier type, but doesn't necessarily have to be. And they put them through the ringer to see how they'll react whenever they are put into pressure. So, for instance, let's say that they see this person and they're like, yeah, this guy has potential. So what they're going to do is take all of his money away, ruin his life, kill his family, like spread rumors that he has cheated on his wife with a bunch of, like people in town, and so on and so forth, and just ruin this person's life, and then see how they react, and if they react with, all right, well, time to win, you know, time to seize the day, they tend to be making the Lizombras. If not, well, eh, it's a failure, move on. So the Lizombra ruined this person's life for really no reason. Lizombra don't typically just embrace willy-nilly, so... This idea of just, like, I'm the street urchin who believes in ideals and, like, individualism. Lissandra aren't necessarily going to embrace someone who is, like, not willing to tow any party line, who is just raw, raw, rebellious 100% of the time. They're not going to go after that type of person. The Tremere, most certainly, the Tremere have an extremely stringent way of doing things. So, if you're an Anarch by trade or a Sabbat, you're typically not going to be a Tremere. And in my games, I don't allow them, period, because I think that it adds to the allure of the Tremere if they're so good at ruining dissidents that nobody, that they don't exist. But that's the general idea, is that this game is so, Vampire is so involved with its mythos, with how the clans are structured, that you can't just dive in and come up with any character you want and then retroactively fit it into a clan and then say, I'm non-traditional. In order for you to make non-traditional characters, you have to have an extremely good understanding of the mythos and realize how this can work, how can I tow this line, walk this razor's edge to get this character to fit into the story that has been presented for Vampire. Vampire is not d and It is not just do whatever the hell you feel like. There are rules set in place for it. And so, generally a good idea for, for Baby's first vampire character is to go clan first. And to make, sadly, a very traditional clan character. Because I know a lot of people like... Especially nowadays, you get a lot of people who want to be non-traditional. You hear the tradition, then you're like, well, I'm, I don't fit the mold. In Vampire, if you don't fit the mold, then you weren't brought in to begin with. Like, there are several clans where that's not the case, but a lot of clans are like, there is no non-traditional. There is traditional, and then there is not in this clan. So, it's really hard to get very non-traditional. Like I said, it's like, I want to be a non-traditional Tremere. I want to be a non-traditional Lissandra. They don't really exist. I mean, Lissandra do, but... They don't really exist, or they exist very, 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 very rarely. And odds are, you're not one of them. So, whenever you get at least, like, the first-time players, you really should start with, alright, it's your first time, so you need to construct, you know, a very traditional character so you can understand the foundation and fundamentals of the game. And then, after you've played a little while, and you're like, alright, I want to make... Let, let's go with a, a Ventru, but a Ventru Anarch. A Ventru Anarch that was cast out by his sire for, for, let's say, being too inventive. And I think that that is an extremely well thought out character. It's still a Ventru, and still doing the Ventru thing, but for reasons X, Y, and Z has been exiled and has decided to join the Anarchs. Very good, but if you're just like, well, I'm a Ventru tried and true, and all of a sudden one day I decided to leave... 
that doesn't really fit the mold. You would you would be of the ideology that you're ready to to champion the Ventru cause. So when it comes to Vampire the Masquerade, one of the biggest advices that I can give is that you should go clan first and then concept, not the other way around. And whenever you're actually much more comfortable with vampires, whenever you can really get into the non-traditional characters, so you can understand what would actually exist in this universe and what wouldn't. So, thank you all so much for watching this very brief vlog on this, and I, uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. Please like and subscribe for more. Go follow me on Twitter. Go to my, please go to my Patreon. Become a patron on Patreon. Excuse me. And I promise that I'm going to have a lot more videos up very soon. I'm already working on some more Critter Miss videos and a couple of other new things. So look forward to that in the near future. Thank you.